Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So, friendly reminder, we are in a weird week. Okay, so today we're doing a lecture. You just took the super hard vocab quiz of 1 through 10, of course, 7th period. Uh, Monday we have no school. Tuesday you have 11 through 20. I'm not seeing you Wednesday. And then you are, of course, testing on Thursday. So next week you're losing a day because we're testing on Thursday. So keep that in mind. It's a very strange kind of thing. I would like us to focus on the study guide today. Is that okay? And then on Tuesday, we'll hit the hardest stuff in the focus. Is that okay with you? Okay. So, yes. Oh, we have whiteboards. Let's use them. Oh, my God. No, I will not be bullied by high school students. I am an independent woman, and I get to make my own choices. And I get to bully you. You don't get to bully me. Uh -oh, My thing's like broken. Whiteboard. I know you're going to have to hand crank it. <laughs> okay. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, uh, what, on your whiteboard, please tell me what is the study of abnormal psychology, uh, abnormal behavior called? Look at your notes there, boss. Good. And psychopathology on your whiteboard please tell me what is it called when anything that does not follow uh, allow a person to function which means they can't dress themselves they can't cook for themselves they can't do basic necessities what do we call that Kate we're doing whiteboards join us you're so annoying today I feel personally victimized by you today Curtis Maladaptive, on your whiteboard, please tell me, what is a social or environmental setting of a person's behavior called? So depending on the social or environmental uh, setting of a person's behavior, we can see if it's normal or not normal. So if I was standing outside my room and I was yelling at someone, that would make sense. But if I was standing in front of you, it would not, and screaming at a super loud volume wouldn't make sense. What is it, Jalissa? Situational. Situational context. On your whiteboard, what is you, uh, what says that a mentally ill person should not be held responsible for his or for her actions? What is it, Annie? Insanity. Insanity. Olivia, this works better when you use the board. I'm just going to say. On your whiteboard, what theory believes that it is based on biological changes in the chemical or structural or genetic systems of the body? What theory believes that? Corinne? Biological. Biological. What theory believes that abnormal behavior is coming from irrational beliefs or illogical thinking patterns? Good. What is it, Caroline? Cognitive model. Which belief this uh, theory believes that abnormal behavior stems from repressed conflicts and urges? Good. Kaylee? Psychodynamic, psychoanalytic. On your whiteboard, what sees abnormal behavior as learned? Good. What is it, Emerson? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what tool do we use to diagnose disorders with? Good. Olivia! Look at who's participating for the first time. DSM-4. There you go. It's DSM. Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. All I'm going to do is change it. Why? Yeah, who cares? Girl, we got bigger problems. We got coronavirus, okay? We got bigger problems. Is it true that Rome is under quarantine? Yes. I don't know if Rome is. I think Venice is. Florence is. Florence is under quarantine, yes. I don't like Florence. I don't like Florence. 
I think that's an unpopular opinion, but if I've ever heard one. On your whiteboard, how many axes does the DSM-4 have? How many axes? Madison. Five. Which axe is all about personality disorders and mental retardation? Good. What is it, Sophia? What axe is the global assessment of functioning, which I want to go over in much more detail on Tuesday? Good. Sydney? Five. Five. What axe is clinical disorders and other conditions? Good. Kate? One. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is a disorder in which the main symptom is excessive or unrealistic anxiety and fearfulness? What type of disorders? Good. It's not as hard as you think, people. I literally told you what it was. Uh, Grace Mary. Anxiety. anxiety. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is an irrational and persistent fear of an object, situation, or social activity that consumes your every waking minute? Emily. Phobias. What is a fear of being in a place or situation in which escape is difficult or impossible? Huh? It's a field. It's like open spaces. Cost of, I don't know. There's like ten bajillion so phobias. Like, not to go out, so like, like interacting with like other people. Basically yeah, it's agoraphobia. All right, here we go. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> Can we not with my belongings? Okay, so um, anxiety disorders. So the next type of disorder uh, that fall under, of course, the heading of anxiety disorders are panic disorders. These are disorders in which the panic attacks occur frequently enough that cause a person difficulty in adjusting to everyday life. I know. It's getting bigger. What? You can or can? There you go. I have a video for this, so I was trying to pull out my videos. Is that okay with you, Alexis? Mm-hmm. Me too. 10, 15 what? She said I hope it's wrong. <laughs> oh my god! No, it's you know, I'm tired. Sorry. It's, it's not you. It's not you. It's, it's Friday. Friday. Nobody's here. I'm exhausted. It really is you. It's so hard to It's so hard to that is so mean. It's not you. No. Not the moment. We don't know what it is. Okay, so panic disorder is a disorder in which panic attacks occur frequently enough to cause a person difficulty in adjusting to everyday life. Ladies and gentlemen, any single person can experience a panic attack. Just because you've had a panic attack does not mean you have panic disorder. Panic disorder is when you get panic attacks all the time. Has anyone in here ever had a panic attack? I've had one. Well, then I won't count it then. Okay. Um, would you agree that they're absolutely terrifying? Like, you literally feel like your heart is going to literally explode, right? Like, you can't breathe. You really do feel like you're going to pass out. Um, you're sweating profusely. Um, it is just, like, anxiety is just, like, pulsing through your entire body. It is absolutely horrifying. Would you agree? People who've had panic attacks. And after you've had a panic attack, don't you crash for like two days? It takes really like two days to recover. Like because they're just so exhausting. They are absolutely traumatic to deal with. And they are absolutely devastating. With that being said, any person can experience a panic attack. I've had one in my life. Do I have panic disorder? No, I do not. I was going through a really rough time. Um, I had a ton of things go horribly wrong. And um, I, sh I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a very high-stress person. And with that being said, um, I had just a ton of things go wrong and literally had a complete breakdown and had a complete panic attack and literally 
um, had to lie down on the floor to try to like pull my breathing together. And it was absolutely traumatizing and so embarrassing. Thank God I was with people who I generally feel safe with and I wasn't like out in public. But imagine being out in public and knowing that everyone's watching, which would only add to the anxiety of the whole thing. Now, people who have panic disorder have this, what I just described to you, all the time. And it can be triggered at any minute, at any moment of the day. So do you think they're anxious about panic attacks? Yes. Do you think that makes it easier to avoid panics? Attacks are harder to avoid panic attacks. Harder. And that's the problem. And that's what occurs, is that it is incredibly exhausting. It takes physical toll, emotional toll, social toll. Because if people don't understand what's happening, they're like, oh my god, like, are you okay? And then it just makes it, like, worse. There are people here at Plan. I've had two or three kids have panic attacks in my classroom. Maybe it's just my classroom. Because of your class, like AP World? No, it wasn't even AP World, I don't think. Just kind of random things. People have them all the time. They trigger all the time. Emerson, what is going on back there? She said, was it during writing? During writing? You're so sassy today. You and Kate. Is everything okay back there? Okay. So, panic attacks. Panic disorder means that you have panic attacks on a much reoccurring basis. They're happening without triggers, they're happening with cause, and they are essentially uncontrollable. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the disorder section. We're doing disorders for two weeks, and then we're getting into therapy. Now, we do have some drugs that can help lim uh, limit the amount of panic attacks people have. However... Uh, we're not at that unit yet, so people do take medication for panic attacks to help kind of ease the anxiety of them. Then we have obsessive compulsive disorder. People say they're OCD all the time. Guess what? Just like people are like, oh my god, I am such a phobia of snakes. Do they really have a phobia of snakes? Does their whole life revolve around checking to see if the snakes are trying to eat them? No. People say they have OCD. Now, there might be people in your life who actually generally do have OCD, and that is absolutely. But I call myself OCD. Guess what I definitely don't have? I definitely don't have OCD. I have crazy, and I have a lot of that, and I have very pinpoint focus on things that I generally care about, and I know when things are adjusted. But do I have OCD? No. Does it consume every single moment of my life? No, because when I go home today, I'm going to say, screw it, and sit on my couch all night tonight with my feet up and sit there and live my best life. Is everyone clear? <laughs> and I'll be too tired to help clean because McCray is feeling guilty because I'm getting bigger by the second and I'm going to use and abuse tonight, okay? Because my whole family is coming over for dinner tomorrow night and I have to clean my house and I just don't feel like cleaning it because I always clean the house. So guess who's cleaning the house tonight? And I'm going to be like, oh my God, I'm so tired. I deserve it. Treat yourself. <laughs> I did work till 11.30 last night, by the way, okay? I did work till 11.30 last night on my feet, and it was a lot. What? Yes, but if you look at the cognitive, there's also a reason for it, too, which we're going to get to here in a second. Okay, so obsessive-compulsive disorder. These are reoccurring thoughts or obsessions. When you, Olivia, it's rude as hell. Thank you. When you're dealing with obsession, obsession is what something is, okay? So... Obsession, let's do hand washing. How timely with the coronavirus here. Okay, if your obsession is germs, write obsession for your application. Your obsession is germs. Your compulsiveness is to wash your hands. The obsession is what you hate. The compulsion is what you do to keep that stress away from you. So no one is obsessed with hand washing. They're hand-washing to avoid germs. They're obsessed with germs, but in order to take their anxiety away about all the germs around them, they wash, wash their hands. hands. Now, the obsession causes anxiety to rise. You need to know that. The obsession causes anxiety to rise. The compulsion lowers anxiety. So, if I, have, if I am OCD and I am obsessive about germs, by washing my hands, I make myself feel better. So the only way I can cope with my anxiety is to what? 
wash my hands. And that is why people wash, some people wash their hands up to 400 times a day. It's a lot of water. It's a lot of water, and they are constantly doing it, and it ruins their hands. Like, their hands are super cracked because it dries them out, and all these other types of components. Like, it's insane. Like, OCD is like a real-life thing. So, another type of OCD, MTV used to show TV shows. Do they show, like, instead of reality TV? They used to have a show called um, True Life. And if you ever get bored and you want to fall into a vortex that will consume months of your life, True Life from MTV, it's on YouTube. You can see all of them. They do a ton of obsessive compulsive, and they're fascinating. There are people on there who are obsessed with, um, who think their house are going to burn down. They're afraid. They went through a fire. Their house got burned down. And so because of that, they became obsessed with fire. Okay? And their compulsion is to check all of the knobs and all of the security panels and all of the electrical sockets. So there's this one guy on one of these like shows who literally goes through and unplugs every plug in his house every time he leaves his house. And then as soon as he walks into his house, he plugs them in. And then at night before he goes to bed, he unplugs everything. So nothing is plugged in overnight, including his fridge. Nothing is plugged in overnight. And he justifies, he's like, well, if you keep the door closed, then all the food will be fine. Yeah, but all the, like, food in your fridge, and that's what they point out, like, all the food in your fridge thaws a little bit, and then refreezes, and then thaws a little bit, and that can get you really sick. So, like, oh my god. But, his obsession is fire, electrical fire, which has caused the first fire that he experienced, which he didn't have OCD before. And then after experiencing electrical fire that completely destroyed his life and burnt up all of his belongings, he now is upset and the compulsion of plugging things in. That's what OCD looks like. Does it affect every aspect of his life? Does it impede on his ability to do things? Absolutely. And that is a huge component, yes. Yeah, well, and that's the other thing. Is it, what happens if you have a mother who is obsessive compulsive? What have you learned from watching your mother? Yeah, like how many of you, like your mom, like I, I, for perfect fact, is every time I leave my house, I have to have my keys and I kind of shake my keys a little bit like, okay, I got my keys and then I smack my butt because I always have my phone in my butt pocket. I got my keys. I got my phone. Okay, I'm ready to go and grab my purse and I leave. Yes? Well, if, like, is that obsessive, compulsive? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But what am I going to teach, you know, a little baby Bennett here? Shake your keys. Shake your keys. <laughs> smack your butt. Where your phone is, not like just smack your butt out of randomness. Uh, make sure you got your phone in your back pocket and then go. What happens if you have a mother who's obsessive compulsive or a father who's cons obsessive compulsive? Will that affect? Is it learned or is it genetic? We're not really sure, and that's the problem. Okay, generalized anxiety disorder. Okay, is a disorder in which a person has feelings of dread and impending doom, along with physical symptoms of, strength, uh, of stress that can last for six months. That is so much time. We're talking about panic attacks. Panic attacks can last from a minute or two to like 20 minutes, and then they collapse. Panic attacks. Okay, GAD, or generalized anxiety disorder, means you have the feeling of impending doom, like your life is about to end for six months at a time. Could you imagine? Imagine feeling that huge oppression of anxiety with no break, day after day. Because we can all agree, okay? I'm assuming everyone in this room does not have any of the disorders that I'm speaking of, so we're just talking about generalities. I don't know your individual. It's not my business to know your individual. But essentially, if we had a shit day today, we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to feel a little bit better because that was yesterday. Can we agree? It may not work out. You may have a worse day because McCray Bennett keeps having worse days after worse days at work. He's like on the brink of insanity. Okay? But 
he go like when he goes to bed, it's a new day. Something good can happen the next day. We kind of wake up with that. Could you imagine waking up and having the same pressure and no break? Yeah, they don't sleep that well either because of their anxiety. So I have a video for this one. I will tell you, she is the most stereotypical high school girl you've ever met. And she's obsessed with glee. So it's a little bit of a time, it's, you know, it used to be a very popular show. Now, thank God, people have seen the light and noticed it's a terrible <laughs> show. It is not such a good show. It was. It is creepy that that grown man only has high schoolers as friends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's creepy. That is really creepy, sweetie. And the fact that you don't think that's creepy makes me uncomfortable. He doesn't have friends. They don't hang out. They just only show them in that room. Oh, yeah, no. 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 They don't go to class. They don't do anything. They're just And hopefully a walker. So, I know my girl is, like, the most stereotypical, in the worst ways, high school. Um, but, uh, she has a lot to say, and this is, like, a real person, and this is, like, her experience. We're not going to watch the whole thing because it's a little too much high school, you know? As we're sitting in high school, I know, but you'll, you'll see it in a sec. All right. Hi, everybody. So if you know me, you probably know that I'm a really big fan of the TV show Glee. On it tonight, they're going to do a Born This Way thing. Like, you know the song by Lady Gaga? Everybody knows the song by Lady Gaga. And it's like, yeah, I was born this way. And it's like pride about who you are and la la la. And uh, they're going to sing it on Glee tonight. And everybody has shirts. And they're about, it's something about themselves. Uh, but I really liked Emma's. Emma is the guidance counselor who's kind of, you know, she has OCD, and so her shirt says OCD, and Tell I really mom. like that, Tell and I wanted mom. it, uh, but OCD, while I have it, isn't one of my biggest things, so I decided to make one out of my biggest thing that nobody understands what it is, and that is this, which is GAD. GAD stands for Generalized Anxiety Disorder, which is something I have really badly. Uh, a lot of people who are hopefully watching this know me in real life and go to school with me and those people would know that a lot of the times I'm not there and you know I've gotten a lot of crap for that and I get jokes like Haha, I think you're faking which just really kind of bugs me and it's not only because of the anxiety a lot of it is actually because of my pain disorder, I have fibromyalgia. But one of the biggest things I have is generalized anxiety disorder, which is kind of what it sounds like. I'm gonna try to explain it because many people, I I assume, would hear the name of it and just think, oh, anxiety, well, I get that. It's, everybody has that, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, I've heard about depression before. Like, well, everybody gets sad, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, no, no. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this. I woke up feeling like this. Uh, I get panic attacks a lot. People with generalized anxiety disorder tend you normally do. So I woke up this morning, and you know the feeling you get when you get in trouble? Whenever I get in trouble, I get this feeling, and my heart beats really quickly, and I can feel it throughout my entire body and I almost feel it try to like escape through my throat I guess you could say I feel like pressure and my whole chest really feels like this black hole and everything's collapsing into it and I my lungs are just not capable of holding that much air I try to breathe in slowly I just like can't uh, it feels like I've been running or something. And then I get really, really hot. I'm really hot right now. I get this a lot. I mean, physically, it's not just an in-your-head thing. People are like, no, it's just in your head. I mean, the root might be, but you feel it everywhere, and it does not feel pleasant. A lot of physical crappy stuff going on. And one of the worst parts of it is that you don't know where the hell it came from. You just get these inexplicable feelings of danger. You don't know why. Nothing happened specifically, necessarily. You're just terrified, and you don't know why. And one of the other big problems with that is that because you feel terrified, you go through your head what could be wrong, and then you find things, and then you get more freaked out. 
And a lot of the times, people with all kinds of anxiety disorders, including OCD and phobias and stuff, we know that it's totally irrational. We know that our fears and all of that are totally, we know that they make no sense. We know that whatever we're afraid of isn't going to hurt us or whatever, but it's the physical feelings that we cannot change. Really, I think that the biggest fear that a person with an anxiety disorder has is fear itself in the form of a panic attack. I do everything I can not to get them. Really, there are many points to this video. This shirt... Was I wrong? No. About the girl. A little, very high school. Can we agree? As stereotypical as you get. But, um, sounds pretty terrible, don't you think? I mean, just the irrational fear. She knows that, she knows there's nothing's going to hurt her, but there's nothing she can do to eradicate that feeling. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, it can last for six months with no break. Think about your worst stressors, okay? The worst days of stress. How long did it last, really? Probably a full 24 hours, yeah? Maybe 48? God forbid, you know, three days, four days? Imagine going six months with it. Could you do it? I can't. Oh, hell no. And then have and panic attacks on top of it? Oh, hell no. All right, so causes. Here we go. I would do this on your focus. When you look at anxiety disorders on your focus, it'll say um, causes, correct? It should have a chart that says What's biological. Number, yeah. Okay. There you go. What number is it? Uh, number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Perfect. Six. Huh? It doesn't say Let me see. Oh, well, we could just do number nine, which we know of. Um, perfect. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, for number nine, you should be able to fill that in right now. I'll give you a second to fill that in. And then, so if you're suffering from an anxiety disorder, according to a psychoanalytic therapist, they're going to say that it's because you have repressed urges and desires that are trying to come into consciousness that is causing it. So you're not doing your best, you're not living your best life the way you should be. And that's why you have anxiety. According to behaviorists, it's a state that, it's a state that, that disordered behavior is learned through both positive and negative reinforcement. So a behaviorist would see this girl that I just showed you, my Glee fan, number nine, is what you should be filling out. Yeah. So for behaviorists, they will see these uh, anxiety attacks is that this girl continues to have these um, Generalized anxiety attacks because she gets positive reinforcement because people are like, oh, my God, you're here today. You're never here. Oh, my God, how exciting. Like, she gets positive reinforcement from that. Cognitive believe that it's excessive anxiety comes from illogical thought processes. So, and then we'll fill in your focus because I got the next part here for your uh, study guide, I mean. You're doing number nine right now, Sophia. Yeah, and it can last for six months. How it builds up, it can it's consistent over six months and includes panic attacks. Consistent like daily or like every day. It doesn't have to go for six months, but it's for long extended periods. It's not just like twenty four hours. Hmm. Said six months. Yeah. There's medication for us. But there's pros and cons to medication. And just like with anything, you know, you decide to go to PDQ today and get a milkshake, which I highly suggest because they're delicious. There's pros because you'll be happy and joyful, and then your tongue is going to hurt because you're like, oh, my God, so much sugar. <laughs> but to the pros outweigh the cons, that's what you have to decide. Same thing with medication. All right, here we go. If you look on your study guide, on your next box is magnification. On your study guide, yes? Magnification is the tendency to interpret situations as far more dangerous, harmful, or important as they are. This triggers anxiety. So people who are suffering from anxiety disorders typically have magnification problems. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am not trying to minimize your life. I'm not. 
I remember my life in high school and I remember how important it was. However, in the grand scheme of things, the color of your prom dress will not have a life-sustaining impact. Are we surprised by this? No? We're not surprised? We know? Great. Because every year I have a couple of kids who are just so stressed out about prom. Everything goes wrong. And I'm just like, just, just go with it. Now, if you're a junior, I think you should go to prom. I think you should, because it's a topic of conversation later on in life. How, what was your prom like? It's one of those things, on a first date, it may come up as a stupid experience you went through. As a junior, you should go. As a senior, I feel like you need to go to prom. You need to check the box. Now, if you stay there for the whole time, fantastic. If you stay there for half the time, fantastic. You gotta go to prom. You gotta check the box because it will come up in conversation later on in life being like, oh, I didn't go. Why didn't you go? Because it's prom. Cool. It's part of the American experience. Welcome to it. Go to damn prom, pay the 50 bucks, 75 bucks, whatever it is, because it's going to be a topic of conversation throughout the rest of your life. Because when you have a kid, you're going to be like, you have no idea how bad my prom was. And you're going to tell them how terrible your prom is, but then you have something to say. If you're a junior, don't go to prom. I don't care. If you're a senior, go to prom. If you're a junior, go to If you don't get enough people to go, it's like not going to happen. Fine. Safe. Cozy's upset about it, and I don't like it. Cozy's not. No, Cozy's scary when she's bad. Yeah. She terrifies me. So everyone go. Go to prom. Go to prom. See? Now, I don't personally care. Yeah, but it's like the topic of conversation. I don't personally care, juniors, but seniors, you need to go. Magnification. It's the idea that something that's small and trivial has a huge impact on your life. All or nothing thinking. This is going to happen today. Isn't that Florida? Is Florida out now? Oh, God. How stressful. You not stressed? Oh, well, then that's why you got a big smile on your face. You're like, hell yeah. Okay. All or nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Florida Day is the worst day of the year here at Plain High School. They used to do it in the middle of the day at 11. I'm glad they're doing it at night. No. I'd rather be at 11. No. No, the whole school collectively takes a breath at 11. <laughs> and then you hear some celebrations and then you hear tears. So that's how it used to be. For Florida. Florida's admissions. It's like the first big oh, yeah. University of Florida. I'm really good. So, all or nothing thinking can apply to this. All or nothing thinking is, if I don't get into Florida, I'm not going anywhere and my life is over. There are kids at this school who do feel that way. Can we agree? That if they don't get into Florida, that there is no future for them. Is that you, Kate? So are you dying inside? Why? Are you a junior? Yes. Oh, okay. Don't be stressed for them. They're going to be live happy, successful lives. No, 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 don't make them worse. If they don't get into Florida, there's a bigger life plan for them. Oh, I know. It happens for a reason. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. So, well, you'll know at six. You'll know at six. So all or nothing is the belief that if this doesn't happen, everything in my life is going to fall apart. Every single person in this room has dealt with magnification all or nothing, Correct. Think about the last stupid thing you thought, that if this doesn't happen, I'm going to, it's, I'm not going to survive. There's just no way moving forward. I think it happened to me the other day when I wanted a cookie. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to make it. And if I didn't get the cookie, so your girl got the cookie. And the cookie was not fresh. So it was a disappointing cookie. Everything sucked. It sucked. Still ate it, obviously. But I was disappointed. And your girl does not deal well with disappointment, is what I'm saying. Hmm? I know, seriously. I can easily cry over it. Hmm? Oh my god, because I get so excited about it, and then I just get disappointment is not something. I don't really cry about that stuff. No, but like, cry like, like, every time I watch you play, it's Sunday. Well, okay, that's, that's a you problem. You don't like No, I hate you.